This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Witnesses, black man ordered death of own gang members. A former top commander in the Wondon gang yesterday testified that reputed leader Andre Blackman Brand had reportedly given orders for some of the gang members to be executed. The former gangster, the second top-tier member to be testifying before the Home Circuit Court, spoke about two alleged gang members who are defendants in the matter whom the reputed leader had wanted dead. On one occasion, Blackman sent Smokey and Easy defendant Marco Miller to kill a squeeze eye, defendant Jazil Blake, because him said squeeze eye if he did and him want them to kill him. The witness testified, saying that this happened in 2017. When asked how he was privy to that information, the witness said that he was present when Blackman instructed another member who was the driver to go and pick up the two men. The witness, however, did not say why the reputed leader wanted squeeze eye dead and if the alleged members had actually complied with Blackman's alleged order. The self-confessed ex-member, who claimed he was the second in command and was very close to Blackman, said the reputed leader had only wanted to kill defendant Chevoy Evans, who goes by the name Cartel. Blackman said he wanted to kill him because he said he was an informer, the witness recalled. The witness later shared that Cartel, who he said was always armed, had also found himself in Blackman's bad book after he wasted some of the gang's ammunition. On New Year's Eve, him fed them out and only three left back, and Blackman said he might go buy them back and him and brain for work it out, the ex-gangster recalled. The second witness, who is testifying via video link, disclosed on Thursday that the gang had its own criminal court in the communities of Rivoli and Waterloo Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, before which it would haul delinquent members and those who had been branded as informers. If you do something wrong, that's the court that they would try you in. And if you are part of the gang, and your name a call up, and if black men sent for you, and you don't go yourself, others will come for you and then beat you. And if everybody vote for you dead, that means they them go kill you. But at the end of the day, it's all up to black man. He had shared. At one point, I had to beg for Stenneth. Defendant Michael Wheatley, the witness further claimed while describing Stennett as a foot soldier and a shooter. The witness, who said he was one of the gang's drivers and had joined the gang in 2016, also testified that the gang had a lot of AK-47 weapons. The prosecution witness will resume his evidence in chief on Monday. The reputed leader and the 32 other alleged gang members are being tried on an indictment with 25 counts under the Criminal Justice Act. Gordon Town Main Road officially reopened. The Gordon Town Main Road in East Rural St. Andrew, which was severely damaged by heavy rainfalls, was officially reopened on Friday by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. We have resurfaced the road up to basic standards and it has been properly marked and properly graded so the people who live and traverse through this area have greater convenience and safety, Holness stated. He was speaking at the official opening ceremony at the site along the Gordon Town Main Road. Holness pointed out that he was pleased that the project was completed on time and under budget. The initial budget was projected at $187 million. The project saw the construction of a retaining structure over 24 meters high. This structure consists of three tiers, a reinforced concrete foundation that is 1.7 meters by 5.7 meters wide, a reinforced concrete retaining wall that is 9.3 meters high, and a reinforced concrete wall with a base that is 2.5 meters high by 9.5 meters wide, with the main structure being 10.5 meters high by 7.7 .7 meters wide, he disclosed. Member of Parliament for East Rural St. Andrew Juliet Hulness said the Gordon Town Main Road was a major concern because of the level of traffic that traverses the road. So residents, I thank you for putting up with us for the period, and guess what, you are richer for it. You are better for it because now we have a sustainable strong wall built right here, she noted. Meanwhile, a resident from Gordontown said he was thankful for the new road because it was hard walking and carrying goods on the alternate route, so I appreciate it definitely. I give it 200 years before it can collapse again. 
The National Works Agency oversaw the planning, execution, monitoring, and the closing of the project in collaboration with NF Barnes Construction and Equipment Company Limited and the Kinetic Engineering Services. Chang, in charge of government as wholeness departs Ireland for UN Climate Change Conference. Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Harris Chang is now in charge of the government as Prime Minister Andrew Holness has departed the island for the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties in Glasgow, Scotland. In a social media post, the Holness said he left the island Saturday morning for the conference. I will return to the island and will update the nation. During my brief absence from the island, the Honorable Dr. Horace Chang, Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security, will be in charge of the government wholeness posted. The COP26 conference is scheduled for October 31 to November 12. Jamaican dies on Caribbean Airlines flight from Barbados. A Jamaican died on a Caribbean Airlines flight from Barbados to Jamaica on Thursday. Passengers on the flight said the man was between 35 and 45 years old. He was discovered unconscious in the aircraft's toilet. Caribbean Airlines did not provide details on the incident, but said the crew followed all the relevant operating procedures. A doctor who was among the passengers on the flight assisted in trying to revive the man. Man killed two others injured in St. Thomas crash. A man is dead and two others injured following a motor vehicle crash on the Hartees Main Road in St. Thomas on Friday morning. The deceased has been identified as 26-year-old John Sterling of Hillside in Yala, St. Thomas. The two other men remain hospitalized. One of them is said to be in critical condition. It is reported that shortly after 9 o'clock, Mr. Sterling reportedly lost control of his car, which hit an embankment. It overturned and then hit a utility pole. UK to deport more Jamaicans on November 10. The United Kingdom is arranging a deportation flight to Jamaica scheduled for November 10. This will be the second flight in three months and a fourth since the COVID-19 pandemic. Chairman of the Windrush National Organization, Dr. Desmond Jadu, told the news that it is not yet known how many people will be deported. On August 11, seven Jamaicans were deported aboard a UK Home Office charter plane. Ninety people were originally airmarked for deportation. Statistics from the Home Office show that 140 Jamaicans with criminal convictions were deported on six flights between 2016 and 2021. Jadu said some charter flights have left the UK virtually empty and at extreme cost to British taxpayers. We understand the expense came to about a quarter of a million pounds. If there are late legal challenges and that reduces the number of people on a flight, it's solely because there are flaws in the decision-making processes, otherwise judges would not be intervening and taking people off flights, he said, of the August 11th flight. Further, he said, statistics show that the numbers have fallen on every successive flight since a plane left on September 7, 2016, with 42 people on board. During the period, the only year there was more than one flight was 2020, with 17 people removed in February and 13 in December. Jadu also raised concern about deportation charter flights amid the COVID-19 pandemic. At the time of the last flight to Jamaica, the number of deportees was drastically reduced because of an outbreak of COVID at one of the detention centers. When you look at the bigger picture, it begs the question of why deportation flights are flying during the pandemic, he said. 20-year-old charged following shooting of three people at a Victoria Court. 20-year-old Keyshawn Robinson of a ward closed Kingston 8 address was charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, wounding with intent and malicious destruction of property by the St. Andrew North Police Division. The charges are in relation to an incident that took place at the Victoria Court apartment, Whitehall Avenue, Kingston 8, on Tuesday, October 12. Reports are that about 8.30 p.m., three people, two men and a woman, were among a group of people at an illegal wake when they were pounced upon by Robinson, who opened fire hitting them. The other people in the group escaped unhurt. 
The police were alerted and the injured people were taken to the hospital where they were admitted. Following investigations, Robinson was arrested and placed before an identification parade where he was pointed out. He was subsequently charged after he was questioned in the presence of an attorney. 47-year-old Portland farmer charged with assaulting 13-year-old girl. 47-year-old Mark Lewis, a farmer of Portland Road in Port Antonio, Portland, was charged with indecent assault in relation to an incident which took place in Richmond Hill in Port Antonio on Saturday, September 13. Reports are that a 13-year-old girl was asleep when Lewis tried to pull down her dress. A report was made to the police, an investigation carried out and Lewis was arrested. Following a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney, Lewis was charged, the police said. February trial date set for Rio Cobra fish kill matter. A February 14 trial date has been set for the matter involving mining company Windalco and the National Environment and Planning Agency regarding the discharge of effluent into the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine two years ago, which caused the fish kill. The matter was mentioned in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday. Kestonard Gordon, vice chairman of the St. Catherine Parish Development Committee, said both parties have indicated their readiness following the lengthy delay, he said, was caused by procrastination on the part of the defense. There were reports that some residents of Kent Village in St. Catherine suffered respiratory illnesses due to the discharge of effluent into the Rio Cobre. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.